right good morning everybody welcome to another round of coffee and questions and what we're going to talk about today i'm going to let charlie the little puppet helper that i have in the shop read you the you know the question that was asked on the forum and i thought i'd make a quick tip video for you and the question is whether you're welding steel or whatever you're doing out in your garage if you have a joint I mean is there a way to make it stronger so it's like welding two pieces of steel together like a butt joint and then saying well how can I make that joint stronger and I'm gonna let Charlie read the question and then we're gonna go ahead and just jump into the discussion about it so I'll be right back with you I'm gonna pull a picture off of the web but I'm gonna have Charlie ask you the question everybody say hi to Tina the shop girl she's my helper be careful she's a badass all right charlie take it away all right handyman the question is if i have two pieces of tube steel or anything like that and they're butt welded together but i want to increase the strength of a just beyond the butt weld is there a way that i can do additional welding to strengthen up that joint Thank okay you. so i blew this picture up about about as much as i really can without distorting it too much but this is on a very large project obviously that somebody did but the concept's the same if you've butt jointed two pieces of steel together you don't have enough confidence that it's going to be strong enough i would do the same thing he did in the picture you can take a piece of plate steel it just depends on the thickness that you want to use in the project you're doing and lay it over the top like he did here in the picture I've done this before and it's overkill but I've welded all four sides and I've done it on the opposite side and that will add a hell of a lot more strength I mean to that joint I've seen people that go all the way around rectangular steel I mean doing the same thing um, it probably in my opinion is way too much and probably way more than what you really needed the point is is here is this is a simple solution and it's one that like you know i had somebody drop in the comment on the forum like you know this sarcastic comment like well duh that's something that everybody should know maybe maybe it's something you didn't think about at the time when you really needed to do it so i felt it's worth the discussion now on these trailer flips you'll see in my videos where if i come across a utility trailer or a trailer inexpensively i go ahead and i buy it i fix it up paint it you know primer fix the welds put d rings i do all kinds of things and i get it ready and then i resell it now there are times on there where the joints are rusted out they're bad or they decayed through let's say they have a hole in and around some weld because that's where water collected and it ate its way through but the steel's good on you know the opposite sides and i'm worried about it so what i'll do is i'll weld prep you know both sides of this and then i apply this patch and then i go ahead and i weld it on so that's a quick easy fix so we'll switch over to questions and see if there is any give me just a moment uh, one question i mean how do i know how thick of a patch or piece of steel to use it's up to you i mean i don't think it matters depending on the project on these trailer ones i don't know it could have been quarter inch plate it could have been you know some higher gauged sheet metal that i was using it just depended on you know the patch that i was applying and where and i use you know what i can because once it's welded and you use that in all my videos i described to you a four and a half inch angle grinder with flap with uh, flap wheels i clean it up smooth out the welds and i get it all ready for painting and of course i wipe it down with acetone like i told you before i primer it and paint it so i mean that question is kind of hard to answer i mean i use what i have at hand and what i think will work structurally and what cosmetically will look good so it's kind of whatever you have or take a look out at the steel supply place and the cutoffs and you'll find something you can use as a patch um also i can add that there might be areas um there was an area on a trailer where the tire mount and all this stuff was going to come to and i thought well I'm gonna put this patch on there, but I also drilled a hole all the way through it from one end to the other, and I put a bolt in there, a nice, I don't know if it was half inch or three quarter inch bolt, and tightened the hell out of it. So it's like way overkill, but it was for safety reasons. I didn't want the tyler, you know, the tire, the tire mount, or that part of it where, you know, it seemed to have been decayed, falling off, you know, while I was driving or whatever. So 
yes it's overkill um i get it somebody made that comment you went way way overboard on it but i did for safety reasons and well, that's the way i did it so you can do bolts is my point and then also weld i mean which will really double and triple you know the strength and the securing part of it so those are things to think about depending on what it is that you're trying to do but on the trailers and things like that that's how i've done it this patch method or this overlay of another piece of steel and then weld the hell out of it works really well a lot of people use an arc welder some people use oxyacetylene i use a mig welder um, i do have oxyacetylene but it wouldn't be my preferred way of doing this you know this kind of uh, patch for strengthening any other questions? Uh, what size MIG wire? Uh, you could probably use whatever you want. I used 030 on things on the trailer because uh, the metal's thicker, it's more structural. If all you have is 025 or something, take a little bit more time, but I mean, you know, you could still weld it. But, uh, you know, 030, it's common. It's out at all the big box stores. It's even at Harbor Freight, easily to get a hold of. Make sure you weld prep, okay? That's another thing that adds strength and durability to what you're doing. And I've some people just skip that and they just smack the piece of steel on there and start welding. I mean, I don't do that. You know, I clean the surface off that it's going on to, as well as, you know, the patch itself. I clean that area all the way around it with my four and a half inch angle grinder again. And I get it to be nice, shiny steel. I put it on there and I weld. Mm, you'll notice your welds are coming out smoother they're also coming out, like I said, more strong, but uh, that would be my tip on doing that. Yeah, I understand the question, um, Jim. Um, I think that was your name that you're asking me. Uh, what do you do if your welds look crappy or it didn't weld correctly? Um, all right, I'm gonna give you my opinion. It's probably gonna be controversial. People will probably make their remarks in the comment below. Okay, I would use a grinder and I would grind it down all the way around it and then I would re-weld right over the top of it and take your time, slow your pace down. You know, maybe you're going too fast, maybe it's not clean enough. It could be a lot of different things. I go, but you can certainly weld over the top of your original weld that you thought was crappy. Grind it down, smooth it out, go over it again. That's what I would do. Make the next one just go a little bit thicker going back and forth you know across it come on down it if it looks crappy but you got you know a good uh burn through on it let's say and you know it's a good weld just clean it up uh, that's my advice all right folks um i didn't want this to be a long video i'm just telling you what i do in terms of re-strengthening butt joints so i hope you click subscribe i hope you follow me we will do some how-to thing this weekend as i have time off you folks have a great day. I hope you click subscribe. Bye-bye.